Where are you staying? I live in Port Orange, but I work. Uh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, first and foremost, let's get through all the preliminary stuff, and then I'll okay. tell you a little bit about myself and, and what we're doing. And in this video, we're going to see something different from the usual interrogations. Today, we're going to watch a polygraph test and how difficult it is for a killer to get away with lying. On October 17, 2015, Sasha Sasmudian returned to her apartment building after a night of heavy partying. Sasmudian was quite drunk and had misplaced her keys and phone and had no way of getting into the building. Another resident eventually opened the door for her and the night guard Stephen Duxbury eventually left her in front of her door. Those were Sam Sudin's last moments. She would be dead by morning. Yeah, because I mean, I, I, you know, I've heard of polygraphs. You know, you see it all on TV and stuff like that. But uh, I'm not really sure exactly how this all works. I'll explain it. It's awesome. What I need you to do is print your name here, read all this out loud to me. This is your consent to take a polygraph here today. From what I understand, you're here on an appointment. I guess you made an appointment with the detectives to come down for yeah. this polygraph. Well, they, they made the appointment for me. They asked me if I would want to come in yesterday, and I said, yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm just saying you're not under arrest or anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're just a witness that yeah, they're just trying to vindicate everybody and follow, the, you know. Yep. Okay. Because I don't know too much about it. I want to ask you a little mm -hmm. bit, um, see what you know about it, and it should be pretty quick. You know, you know a little bit more, but only from what the news is putting out there because I've been trying to keep track and find out. The test hasn't even started yet, and Duxbury is already lying. He knows more than what has been on the news. He interacted with Sam Sudin in front of witnesses the night of her death and walked her to her apartment. As a security guard, he is also, or should be, who went in and out of the building that night, so in several ways, he had a head start on the police as far as information is concerned. What's going on? Well, we all know the best idea. Well, we all know we can't trust the news anyway. Yeah, they've already tried. They've already tried flagging me down once at work, and I'm like, I'm gonna keep walking this way and go inside. Yeah, because I am not talking to you vultures. Uh, so go ahead and put your name here. Read this out loud to me. I just make sure that you know how to read. <laughs> Reading? What is that? Uh, do you want the like my full middle name too, or just the middle initial? Um, middle initial is fine. Okay. Okay. I, Stephen Michael Duxbury, acknowledge that I am fully aware of my constitutional rights to reverse, and I do hereby request voluntarily, without duress, coercion, threat, promise of reward, or immunity, that a polygraph examination, truth verification, slash lie detector test be administrated to me. I further consent to any electronic recording of the entire polygraph procedure, including but not limited to videotaping, after having the examination process explained to me and having been advised of the requirements and processes involved in the polygraph test, I do hereby request the necessary attachments to be placed on my person, and I do hereby consent to everything that is necessary to be done and to be spoken in order to effectuate, effectuate, to effectuate yeah. this request. New word. I understand that conditions such as hypertension, pregnancy, respiratory, or heart ailments, and any medication that I am taking may affect the results of the polygraph examination. I understand that the examination itself may be stressful and that I may consult with a physician prior to this polygraph examination to determine if it is suitable for me to be tested. To the best of my knowledge, I have no physical or mental condition that will adversely affect my taking the examination today or cause adverse results during the interview slash examination. I do hereby release and forever hold harmless the examiner, the agents, and or employees of the Orlando Police Department and the City of Orlando. I further agree that the results of this examination may be made available to the proper authorities and released by the examiner as deemed necessary. Okay, so you can sign that. You can just sign here, data there. Okay. Uh, should have made that appointment with the doctor. <laughs> Why? What's, what's going well, on? Well, I've been under a lot of stress lately because I'm moving. I've got a wedding coming up. This whole situation happening. I mean, the plan hell well, we'll, we'll, we'll get this behind you. I mean, it, it's just you know, it's right here. Yep. Yeah, it's just having to deal with. Any deaths other than, you know, my stepsister dying a couple years back um, other than when I was in Afghanistan. And that was not a fun time for me. Uh, it's the 22nd? It is. So it's just like... Um, 
Now, did you give sworn statements on that stuff? Uh, when I went on the night that all the police officers were there, I did have a lot of statements. Okay, when you talk to the detectives here, they read your rights or anything like that? They have not. Okay, and this is the same form we use for even employment. Uh, we make sure that everyone's fully aware of what their rights are before we even get started. It's just a uh, procedure that we use here, and that's why it's on the back of the consent form. So what you would do is read each one out loud, and if you understand, I'll put your initials there, answer these last two questions. If you have a question about any of them, Mm -hmm. Stop me and ask me. I will explain it to you until you understand. All right. It's it's just important for me to know that you know what your rights are. Yes, sir. Doesn't mean you're under arrest or anything. Mm -hmm. It just means you know we're going to be talking about a, a criminal case. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You can kind of read them out loud. No, I was like, sure that you. Okay. Right. So you have the right to remain silent. Initial. Anything I say may be used against me in court. Initial. I have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during the questioning. If I cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided for me before questioning without charge. Initials. Has anyone threatened me or promised me anything to get me to talk to you? No, they have not. Do I understand these rights and do I wish to continue the interview at this time? Yes. And And level of education. Um, and I'm in college now, so some college. Yeah, you just put some college, that's fine. So what I need to do now is steal a little information from you. You have your driver's license, I just make sure you are who you say you are. I should hope so. Sometimes I don't feel like myself, but that's just what I think. Yeah. All right. You're in the Marines? I was. I was Air Force. All right. Yeah. All right, come on. Make fun of me now. Come on. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. To me, I look at the whole rivalry between the service branches as just brotherly love. It is. It's just, we're just jealous because you get all the nice dinners and nice places to stay. Yeah, actually, to be honest, I was actually a little disgusted when I found out that if, like, I had been stationed at any other base than an Air Force base, I would have been getting paid extra for living in substandard conditions. To me, I found that to be inappropriate. If, if me living in the same conditions that an army or a marine, or you know, a soldier or a marine would be living in is considered substandard, that's an insult to you guys. Duxbury takes the opportunity to do a little sucking up to the polygraph technician. Not that it will do him any good. He might have been able to charm his way through an interview, but he won't be so lucky once he is hooked up. We're used to it. I know, we but, start from day one like that. Yeah, no. So like, <laughs> really? You're just kind of pompous like that. All right. Um, ever been arrested? Uh, yes, juvenile. Juvenile, okay. And what, what was that for? Uh, that was, uh, do I have to discuss my juvenile record? You know, no, we, we don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> I was put as a juvenile. It, 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 well, it, it, it's a really jacked up uh, situation that happens. Well, you guys understand. We all have life experiences. We yeah. all done stupid <laughs> shit when we were young. Yeah. And we've grown from those. You, you know, you're not actively still doing the same silly stuff. Yeah. So it, it's, it's all, all part of living mm -hmm. and growing up. And it's, it's called life. Yeah. That's true. And we're expected to do that because we're immature. We were young and we were stupid. And that's how you learn. So, and no one here is going to judge you because I guarantee I've done probably worse than what you did probably. <laughs> um, at some point, we've all done stupid stuff. So, yeah. Nah, basically it was just, um, my best friend's older sister was babysitting my siblings because they wouldn't listen to me. My mother was a single mother raising four kids. We lived in a farm, and this is where I lived in uh, Lewis, Massachusetts. Kid, a uh, kid that lived down the road kept sneaking over to our farm and opening all the doors, letting our animals out in the middle of the night. We lived on a major highway. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to take the dogs out to the barn. She came with me to help me because I had a gold retriever and another dog. And, uh, I think it was a chocolate lab. And while we were out there, I had forgotten to plug in the uh, cord that gave power to the barn in the house. So it was pitch black, and I thought I heard something upstairs. And I thought, oh, God, that little shit's upstairs. So, you know, not really thinking, I went over to the wall of tools and I grabbed the first thing that 
it seems sense to me, which was a shovel head that had broken off the staff. Mm -hmm. I go up the stairs and she's following me. She was about a year or two older than I was. And, you know, she's kind of a little nervous about what's going on. So I'm like, okay, stay here at the top of the stairs. If anyone tries to run by you, stop them. She's like, okay. So I go walking around, but I can barely see anything because, you know, the moonlight, not really, you know, thinking too clearly, looking back. I'm walking, I hear floorboards creak, I see a shadow move out of the corner of my eye, turn around, upside the back of her head. Oh, she had moved and followed me. I didn't know. Okay. So that's a simple mistake. Yeah, well, that simple mistake, unfortunately, went right down the worst roads possible. She freaks out. And I find out later that's because she had been raped by her three previous boyfriends and her uncle. So see, she had some severe issues with that. Mm -hmm. Her mother hated my mother because her kids felt more comfortable talking to my mother than her. So she forced Becky to press charges against me. State troopers in the area basically assumed I was trying to rape her or something. And then it just went from there. And we ended up having to leave the area. I moved to New Hampshire. They transferred my parole because they put me on parole because I pled guilty because rather than take it to court and have Becky's reputation utterly destroyed because my mother was her confidant, I, made, I, I took a hit because I'm not going to ruin my best friend's sister or his life over that. And just, I don't know, I, may, I probably could have won, but it's like I didn't want to hurt my friends. No, I, I completely understand. So, so you said they charged you with attempted. They no, they no, they they, they charged you with hitting her. They 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 charged me with that, but the prosecutor wanted me tried as an adult. I was only about fifteen. She wanted me tried as an adult. Did not want me to be left around children. I mean, just she just kept piling stuff on. Okay. And they never officially charged me with attempted rape or anything like that. Okay. But what I ended up pleading guilty to was reckless assault because the intent to hit was there but not the intent to hit her. Right. When I got to New Hampshire, uh, the parole officer came to the house to meet me. We talked for several hours about the whole case. He got up and was like, by the way, your parole's over. And ends my parole right there. Because he's like, had this happened anywhere else, you would have gotten a slap on the wrist in community service. So police came on Saturday night. Yep. They were there actually before I got there. Okay. I actually had shown up about 30 minutes early. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, when was the last time you saw? What's her name? I I think. Well, I know because I you know saw the uh, news stuff that it's like Sasha or something or other. Okay, Sasha. Okay. So when when was the last time you had? I was like, yeah. Well, what, was it the night before? Yeah, it was uh, Friday night. Okay. So when you first had contact with her on Friday night. Yep. What was the situation? Um, I had been doing a perimeter patrol, and I had come upon three girls that were at the Marks and North Orange entrance, and you know, looked like they were trying to get inside the building. So I'm like, evening ladies, I have an issue with the thing, and then you know, I'm kind of chuckling because I see that happen all the time with the drunks. Mm -hmm. Well, as I'm starting to walk off, then I get called over by two of the ladies. And they told me that um, that this was their friend, and they really didn't know her. They <laughs> found her wandering around downtown somewhere in kind of a drunken, you know, stupor. I mean, her, the way she was moving, she looked like she was pretty out of it. And um, they got, I guess they got out of her where she lived, so they brought her to Uptown, but she didn't have her key fob with her. She didn't have her keys. She didn't even have any ID. And I'm like, well, if she doesn't have any of that, I cannot help her. I cannot allow her into the building based mm -hmm. on what, you know, what my policies are. Right. Well, as I'm talking to them, another resident, a male, an older gentleman, comes up and he sees us all there and he kind of chuckles. He's like, you guys aren't all robbers, are you? I'm like, no, sir. I'm you know, kind of looking at my uniform. And he's like, okay. Opens the door, walks in, she follows. Finish talking with the ladies, I go in. You know, I'm intent on, okay, finding where this girl is to make sure that, you know, she actually is listening here. She's not just wandering around the building. Well, she was just wandering around the building for a while. Finally, I guess she gets to her apartment at uh, 3.45 and she's trying to enter in the code because she's got one of those digital deadbolt things with the buttons on the outside where you can enter in a code and how do you find her on the third floor? I patrol, I, I check the buildings. Okay. I, I check the floor. So how did she get up there, do you know? Uh, either elevator or stairs. There are, you know, multiple, there are two different elevators and four different stairwells in the building. 
And so you don't know how she got out there, but mm -hmm. you were just patrolling. You, you, you come across her mm -hmm. on the third floor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so she's doing that, and, you know, it's like, I cannot let someone just hang around in the building, trying, you know, outside their apartment, if, you know, say if they got locked out, what, and I didn't know exactly what to do, because, like, she's obviously intoxicated. I mean, completely gone. Duxbury sticks fairly close to the truth, but mainly because during this time period, there are witnesses and security cameras. What he leaves out is the fact that he followed her down the hallway for a considerable amount of time, watching her without interacting. seen her before? No, never. Never seen her before. No, actually at first I thought she was a different female who we've had issues with that the local police over there are actually familiar with because she's had other issues where she's like gone home with guys completely out of her mind drunk and I guess called them because they're like, oh my god, this guy, I don't know where I am, I'm in this guy's bathroom. Kind of but this is not her? No, this is not her, no. Oh, okay. Now that one lives in I think 320. I actually had to deal with that apartment twice because First time, she got locked out. Second time, she locked her roommate out. But, um, yeah, so she thought maybe she had had her key, she left her keys in her car, so she asked me if I would bring her to the parking garage because since she doesn't have a key box, she wouldn't be able to get back into the building. So I'm like, sure, whatever. I've dealt with this before with other drunks who have done stuff like that. So I walk out with her, and before we even get to a car, she's like, wait, I think I remember the number now. So we go back in. I bring her to the door, she's there put punching the numbers away, trying to you know remember what it is, and I'm just thinking to myself, God damn it. Not exactly the smartest or not not the smartest, but the most professional way to be thinking this, but I have to babysit a lot of trucks in that place. Oh and trust me, just a pain in my ass. So I'm like, okay, look, I'm gonna leave you here, keep trying to, you know, plug away at this. When I come back, if you have not figured this out, we're gonna have to do something about this, which is either she's gonna have to figure out, get, get, somehow get a hold of a friend, or I'm going to call the PD and have them deal with her. Okay. When I come back around after walking around, she's not there. So I'm like, okay, she must be in the building. She must have gotten in because I checked the building. There was no sign of her. Now, do you have a, a residence log so you know who lives in what apartment? I do. I confirm. But I can't because she had no idea. Well, because she can't she tell you what her name is and you can look it up and make yeah. sure? Yeah, well, I could, I could have, yeah, I could have done that. Um, when they were going through the um, call box initially, they, um, she said what her name was, and it did come up on the on the on the log. I remember that now. But without her phone to dial herself in, she wouldn't have been able to access the building. Yet. Right. But um, plus, you know, most of the residents there will not let some random person into the building. They will actually like just know you come in with whoever you're supposed to be coming with, or you call them up. They will not just let people in. So when that gentleman let her in, I assumed, oh, he knows that she lives here. And then later on in the evening during my patrol, I thought I saw her again with, the, with some guy. The building has a good deal of cameras, and if Sam Sudin had been with anyone else, at least one of them would have been caught on tape. The only person she interacted with was Duxbury. You thought you saw the same girl? Was yeah, I mean, I didn't really get a good look at her face, but... The height, the hair, and the skin color was about the right, about the same thing. And again, like I said, I've never seen this one before, so. Was she wearing the same clothes? Well, the pants were, I think, the same, but I think she had changed her top to like a white top or something. Again, they weren't doing anything that was really out of the ordinary, so I just kind of glanced at them and just continued on my patrol. So when you saw her, when you you were escorting her to her car, when you first made contact with her, she was, wearing, she was wearing a purple top and white pants. Purple top, yep, and white pants. Yes. Okay. Um, you remember what kind of shoes or anything like that? Mm, I think sandals. Okay. Yeah. All right. She was walking, uh, as I call it, flat foot. <laughs> flat, 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 flat. <laughs> and uh, she could barely walk. I mean, she's stumbling all over the place. At one point, she's like kind of hanging on to me, trying to try to stay on her feet. 
So I mean, this girl was gone. Okay. And so when you came back, mm -hmm. she wasn't around. Nope. And I did not see her when I searched the entire building and the parking garage and the perimeter. Okay. Um, at any point, did you knock on the door to see if she was okay? Or no, I mean, uh, to be honest, once they're in their apartment, they're really is they're not really my responsibility because it's a condo. They're not actually apartments that are owned by the building, so. I, it's not really my responsibility to check up on people. Plus, I'm not allowed to go into the apartments, especially if there's only one person there. I would actually probably have to, I would have had to either have another person in the in the apartment with them, preferably someone of you know the opposite sex, right. or male or whatever, or a police officer with me, because that's the liability I am not setting my foot into. Okay, because I've had other residents invite me in, you know, say, oh hey, yeah, you want a Pepsi, you want a Coke, or anything like that, or that. I've uh, been propositioned by the residents before, and it's like, no, I am not going in there. Well, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's, it's a liability that's just not worth the risk. I get it. Um, so I guess it's fair to say you've never been in her apartment? No, never. Okay. Well, this should be pretty easy. Um, and so the next day, what time did you leave that day? I leave about, uh, well, I get off shift at 6 a.m., but usually I don't leave until like 20, 30 minutes later because of finishing up my report, changing civilian clothes. That particular day, I'd actually uh, taken some trash out to the dumpster because I found some uh, after I turned in my report. So I figured, okay, let's throw it away. Taking out the trash is not part of his duties. The fact that he chose to do so on this night in particular, when there would be evidence of a crime to dispose of, is one of the details that made him a person of interest. And where did you find the trash? That was in the hallway. Um, I think it was on the second floor. So about like three bags worth. Do you remember what apartment it was in front of? No, unfortunately I don't. I just, as I was walking through, I saw I'm like, huh, I'm on my way out anyway. Do you normally do that? Or I just saw it on the way out. I mean, if I'm on duty, I will... I take snapshots of it and I leave it there, let the office deal with it, but I was already off duty and I wasn't going to just fill out a whole new report just for three bags of trash. So I just said, screw it. I'll be nice for the housekeeping person. I'll just throw it away for them. All right. And so there was three bags of trash. Yep. Did you look in and see what it was or anything? No, they were tied off and I just grabbed them and threw them. And what kind of bags were they? Um, White, just kind of like your white hefty bags, I guess. Oh, like regular, yeah, just regular trash bags with kitchen yeah. bags. Yeah, with the red uh, drawstring bags or whatever. Okay, and you took them out to the dumpster. To the dumpster. Yeah. And you did that on your way out to leave, or did you take that out? I, I took them out, and I came back in to get my stuff, and then I left. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And I was heading towards where I leave my stuff, and then I saw that, so I was like, screw it, throw it away, came back. Okay, yeah. Um, and then, uh -huh. so you go home, mm -hmm. and you come back the next day at what time? Uh, about 9.30ish. I had gotten there, I'd gotten there early because I'd make good time. And I saw that there were two police vehicles parked over by the um, little parking area before you get into the garage. So I stopped, went over to the officers, I did fight myself as a security officer for the building, you know, just because I you know, want to know what's going on, I figured right. maybe there was a car accident or something like that, at which point they told me they were here doing a check on... Uh, check on the well-being? Yeah, well, well-being, or actually I think they said missing persons, because I figured there were a couple of people there that I guess were, um, they identified as their friends. Okay. And um, they asked me if I had a way to get into any of the apartments, which I don't. And he's like, oh, well, could you go to this apartment and meet the officer there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Go into the building, park, go over to the third floor, and I meet with the officer, and he's there punching in numbers, trying to, I guess, check in to see if it was a police officer or override code for these kind of locks or something. But he couldn't access it. And he asked me if I had keys. I'm like, no, don't have access to the apartments. So when you got there, were you in uniform that time? No, I was, uh, I was wearing... Um, a uh, Deadpool shirt and pants and, you know, my shoes. So did you change first before you went up there? Or you no, just went no, no, I went there. straight there because I wasn't actually on duty yet. I was oh, still okay. off duty. Okay. And when we, you know, we couldn't get access to officers, like, well, if you want to go change, you know, go ahead. You know, we're going to we'll still be here. I'm like, okay. So how did they get into the apartment, you know? Um, I honestly do not. I think they either got a hold of either the family or the 
actual owner of the condo who was renting it and they had the code. Okay. I pretty much, um, once they were doing their thing, I pretty much stayed away from them because I didn't want to you know, bother them. And if they needed me for anything, they just called me. Okay. Um, Another small piece of information that Duxbury leaves out is the fact that he knew exactly who they were there to check on and approached the police first before they contacted him. This is often done by guilty parties to see what information the police might have and to establish themselves as a concerned, innocent bystander. And so, when was the first time you found out that she was deceased? Um, it was later on that evening, about what time. I honestly don't remember. I remember them saying that they, uh, initially when they told me something was going on, they said, well, we have a crime scene. That's all we're telling you. Because I'm like, okay, well, i got to call my boss. And later that night, I guess the property manager said that she, either they told her or she overheard. I can't quite remember. But they said that they discovered a body. Okay, so. Now, have you heard how she was, how she died? at all. No, I mean, I heard a lot of, um, you know, possibilities because I was talking to my boss and he's like, well, you know, based on what you said, I mean, she was that drunk, she could have died in her sleep from alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, I have been following the news and I guess now they're saying that this is a homicide investigation. So I'm assuming, well, when they don't know, so they, they assume stuff like that. When you, they always investigate as a homicide until they can rule it otherwise. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, yeah, cause, I mean, I, I literally, I still, other than what the news has said, I just know what I've been told by the property manager, the officers, and my boss, which hasn't been much. Okay, so you have no idea how, what her cause of death is? No. No, no. Okay, no. never overheard anybody say anything about that, or you have any speculation as to how she may have passed? No. Okay. I mean, other than, like I said, what they told me, I mean, as bad as it sounds, I kind of hope. It was, you know, she just died of alcohol poisoning because if not, it's like, you know, what how old was she? I don't know. Decimation? In her 20s, maybe? Wow, I know. I mean, oh, it could be mid to late 20s. I don't know. I'm terrible at judging ages. I mean, okay. when I first met my mother-in-law, I thought she was in, you know, her mid to late 50s. Turns out she's almost eight years old. Wow. Then again, she's Asian, so, you know, they kind of hit or miss. Yeah, they look young forever, or they turn ancient in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife has actually been mistaken for a high school student a few times. Yeah, well, uh, God bless her. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's see here. All right. Well, I'm doing some kind of formulating some kind of questions in my head mm -hmm. based on what you're telling me. Um, Um, what can you tell me about polygraph? Um, it's a lie detector. I know you're going to be sticking electro electrode things or whatever, you know, basically sensors to me and it's going to measure my response based on the questions you ask me. Yeah. Yes, no. it's kind of it. The, the media back in the early 20s dubbed it as a lie detector. And it's not really a lie detector. Um, it, it's no, no more lie detector than it is a truth detector. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, what I'll be doing is sorry, um, constantly recording your physiological changes in your body. Mm -hmm. Now, what are those? You ever heard of fight, flight, or freeze? Yep. Okay. That is your that <laughs> personally. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's that's basically what it how it works mm -hmm. is our the way our bodies react to certain dangers or stresses. Okay. Um, Obviously, you're probably nervous here today because you've never had a polygraph. Yeah. Your nervousness is not going to affect the test whatsoever. Yes. Okay. Um, what's going to happen? Um, you've never had a polygraph before, you said earlier? No. Okay. No, I never went for, I never actually got a top secret security clearance, so I never was required to take one in the Air Force. Okay. Well, it's not a big deal. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it. And I'll explain everything to you before we even get started. Um, and since you've never had a polygraph before, I'll give you a sample test. Okay. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, it'll allow you to have the components attached to you mm -hmm. and actually go through a test, see what it's like, yep. and realize that nothing here is going to hurt you. There's not going to be anything shocking you, nothing, oh, bad. You, <laughs> nothing like that. The, the, the worst thing about it is the blood pressure cuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, your hand will get tingly a little bit. That's all it is. Uh, I'm sure you've been to the doctors before and you what? had your blood pressure checked. Yeah, actually, um, that happens to me even without it. Like, I could just be sitting like this and 
this whole side of my arm will go numb. And what causes that, that, that muscle, uh, that's actually something I just remembered now. Um, I have actually been diagnosed as uh, having um, nerve, myopathy, is it? Like that? I, um, in this arm, but I'm pretty sure it's in both um, on the nerves on this part of the arm. But they, they assume it's just because of the way my arms rest when I'm typing at the keyboard that it's caused some kind of like a corporate tunnel thing, kind of thing. Kind of, but it, instead of like it causing pain, it just causes numbness. Okay. Well, good. My night, it may actually help you not feel uh, pressure from the cuff. Awesome. <laughs> and so I honestly, some of my medical stuff, unless it's like something major, I really don't pay that much attention to it, which is probably not a good idea. Well, it, we'll, we'll do the sample test. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go over that whole thing. Um, and then we'll get into a couple yeah, of different things. Now, what I need you to do is circle number 95. A little bit. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to practice how this test is going to go. These are the questions on the test. Okay. Regarding the number you circled on that piece of paper, did you circle number 92? No, I did not. Just a simple yes or no. Okay. Did you circle number 93? No. Did you circle number 94? No. Did you circle number 95? Yep. Excellent. However, what I want you to do on this particular test and this test alone is when I ask you if you circle number 95, I want you to say no. Okay. So write the word no next to you. And what do you do when you say no? Lying. Write the word lie. All right. And like I said, this is the only time I want you to do this. Okay. Yep. Did you circle number 95? No. Did you circle number 96? No. Did you circle number 97? No. Did you circle number 98? No. Excellent. Any questions about that? No. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to see what it looks like when you like it. The technician is going through some of the test questions to establish what it looks like when Duxbury lies. Not everyone's reactions are exactly the same, so this is necessary to find an individual's baseline and how they spike when they lie so results can be determined accurately. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully it doesn't look the same as when I tell you the truth. <laughs> it won't. But see, the basic thing is, is when you were this little and you were able to when you started getting into trouble mm -hmm. and you lied to your mom about something, what happened when she caught you lying? <laughs> you got a beaten. Okay, you got in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So as you got older, it got worse and worse, right? Yep. Because lying is what? Bad. Right? And you've been taught that since you were very little. Mm -hmm. So it's instinctive to you. So what happens is, is your first cat was a uh, cat. Okay, and when I asked you that, you kind of looked up, and then you had a picture of what that cat looked like. Mm -hmm. A vivid picture, just like you watched on TV, right? Yep. And that's how our brain works. It's like a big DVR. It stores all our memories. So when we ask a particular question, it'll go over, select that memory, and project it. Mike on your forehead, and you'll see it, okay? Um, so when I asked you that, boom, you saw the picture, cat. Mm -hmm. That was the first answer. Now, if you wanted to lie to me and say it was a dog, you would have had to process that. So your first initial thing was going to say cat. Mm -hmm. So if you've been here like, well, I want to say it's a dog dog. So now you're engaged in another part of your brain. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a slight delay. Not only a slight delay, but that causes your automatic system to kick in because you know you're about to lie. Mm -hmm. And what happened when you used to lie? You, know, you used to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, your autonomic system will kick in. Okay. Whether you realize it or not, it's going to do that. Because your program, from when you're this big, that lion's back. And you never wanted to get caught lying, did you? Nope. There you go. So that's why it works. Okay. So you see how quick you were with cat? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the same thing here. You're going to look at it, and because I'm going to put it on the wall so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So as I'm asking you questions, I want you to just go right down the list. And you're going to see that. Mm -hmm. And so your first response is going to be yes. But you're going to have to decide to say no. <laughs> and... That's going to cause a problem mm -hmm. with your physiological changes. It, it, it'll show up. All right? Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. All right. So uh, any questions or concerns so far? Need to use a restroom or anything? No, I'm just feeling a little tired. That's the only problem right now. All right. Well, we'll normally when I'm supposed to be sleeping. So. Well, we'll get you to do this. Do you have a cell phone on you? No, I do not. Okay. I'll put it in the car. Or, 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 probably not a good thing to bring in here. Excellent. Yeah, I turned mine off. 
So I, I don't just didn't want anything to be a distraction for you. You didn't want it to vibrate your pocket yep. and cause a reaction. <laughs> 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 yeah, I automatically Yeah, it goes vibrating. <laughs> All right, go ahead and stand up for me and um, move the chair. Okay. All right, have a seat. Okay. All right, what I need you to do is put your hands together like you're praying and uh, lift them up and lean forward and lean back. I'm just going to go in your upper abdomen here, and what I need you to do is exhale. All right, the next one's going to go in your upper chest. And exhale again. All right, now your arms down, and you should go a little, then relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Left arm up. Okay. Is it easier with this roll up or no? Uh, nah, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. That's cool. Better like that. Mm -hmm. Alright, now you see the space in between here? Mm -hmm. That's where the customers go. Okay. your index finger. And your right finger. Alright. So like I said before, instructions are very simple. Feet flat on the floor, sit so straight up just like you're sitting. Relax. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this on the wall before we start. But one what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. All right? Yeah. When I say that, no more moving until I tell you, okay, you now can relax. Now mm -hmm. I'll take the pressure off the cuff. Okay. All right? What I'll do first is I'm going to calibrate the, your breathing and your electrical activity, your fingers. And lastly, I'll do the cardio because I don't want that on there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. You ready to do this number test here? Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. The test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Regarding the number you circled on that piece of paper, did you circle number 92? No. Did you circle number 93? No. Did you circle number 94? No. Did you circle number 95? No. Did 
Did you circle number 96? No. Did you circle number 98? No. Did you deliberately lie to any of the questions on this test? No. No way, was I supposed to say yes to that one? Don't worry about it. Okay. Alright, the test is almost complete. Please remain completely still while I take the instrument out of operation. The test questions are simple and brief, and the technician is able to get good readings from him. So it doesn't look like there should be anything that will cause inaccuracies. This means they can proceed with the main questions. This will be all right. Question for you, though. Yes. What is your normal heart rate? I have no idea why. Is it high? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been noticing, like, uh, was it like 130 or 140 or something like that? Yeah, it was like 138. Yeah, that's what they've, actually, that's what they've, um, that's what they were getting uh, towards the end of my career in the military. Even when I went to the DA, it was kind of high. For a resting heart rate? Mm hmm Yep. Now, the last couple of years, I was on a profile because of the Rabdo thing, because they kept trying to test me. They were contemplating doing a med day on me. So I was kind of out of shape. It's okay. I was just curious, because when I saw it that high, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Making sure there wasn't any medical issue there. No. Well, I also noticed when I'm, when I'm tired, my heart rate seems to be pretty high, also, for some weird-ass reason. I'm tired. Okay, so the first the first kind of test we're going to do is it's kind of like a weird test. It's called um, it's basically to find out if you have any knowledge as to how Sasha ended up being deceased. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to ask you very specific questions. Okay, all right. So, just like we went over the numbers question, I'm going to go over the questions before the test, okay? Okay. Uh, these are going to be very simple and straight to the point. Okay. Um, it's going to, uh, basically, this is how it's going to go. Um, do you know if Sasha was poisoned? No, do you want me to answer these now? No. Was she shot with a twenty-two? No. Was she stabbed? No. Was she choked? No. Was she shot with a 38? No. Was she hit with a hammer? No. Was she hit with a chair? No. Okay. Plain and simple. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Now, 
think I feel my heart beating on this thing. That's <laughs> uh, okay. And um, actually, let me let me change this cup and let you roll your sleeve up. Here you go. This is a better tracing. Let you roll your sleeve up. That's not contagious. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> well, I just didn't want you to worry about it. Like, I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure you're actually picking these things up anyway. After every person? Yes, I did. No. All right. <sighs> All right, so as far as the pressure on your cup, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was noticing it's actually even one of my, one of my fingers was raised. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll back it up just a little bit because um, I was getting a really good tracing, but since I pulled your shirt up mm -hmm. and got skin, bare skin, I can uh, back it up a little bit. So you just let me know when your hand feels good enough and we'll get started. Okay. You're good to go? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to say good enough thing that, like, as you were flying. All right, squeeze a couple times for me like we practice. Perfect, really. And do it one more time. And relax. You're ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Do you know if Sasha was poisoned? No. Was choked. No. Was shot with a thirty eight? No. No. 
was hit with a chair? No. Duxbury is being asked questions to which the police already know the answers. This is another form of test questioning to see how he reacts about the murder weapon. Later when they are asking questions where they don't know the details, they can compare his readings with these earlier questions and interrogate him more thoroughly on issues where it looks like he's lying. Almost complete. Please remain completely still. I take the instrument out of operation. You're on the 150s now. Oh, God. Let's get right. Let's get right. All right, you ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right. All right, the test is about to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Do you know if Sasha was poisoned? No. Shot with a twenty two. No. Yeah. 
push his dad, you know. She choked. No. The process can feel slow and repetitive, but that is almost inevitable when accuracy is critical. Duxbury's heart rate is increasing. Aside from guilt, this can be caused by general anxiety over being questioned, including being worried that the results will say he's lying when he isn't, as well as other neurological and health-related factors. Was she shot with a 38? No. Was she hit with a hammer? No. Was she hit with a chair? No. So we got that out of the way. Now um, I want to go through some questions on this next test. Okay. All right. Now this is this is all specific as far as the incident at Uptown. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's more directed to make sure that that you had no involvement in anything that may have happened to Sasha. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So these questions should be very specific for you mm -hmm. and. You should have no problem answering these questions. Okay. All right. Because uh, we, what we talked about, I, I did, um, after we talked, I jotted down some questions. Mm -hmm. um, so here are the questions I'm going to ask you about that night. Okay. Okay. Yep. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Okay. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Did you cause Sasha's death? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Okay. Very straightforward, right? Yep. Very okay. Uh, now, some of the questions are kind of about you. It's about your character. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not you're the kind of person that would do something like this, if, if it was something that, you know, if something was to happen to her, Mm -hmm. by somebody else that you, you weren't the kind of person that would do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the FBI has done all these profiling and, mm -hmm. and they did all this research and interviewed and, and done all these studies as far as people who would do something like this would do other things, okay? Mm -hmm. And based on that, I've come up with some questions as far as um, to make sure that you're not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so if I was to ask you before last... Before last year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? Not well. Does joking really count? I mean, go. No, hey, no, we're right. talking serious. Oh, oh, actual. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Did, I, did anyone piss you off so much that you threatened them with physical harm? You're not that kind of person, right? No, no. You'd have to do something to actually provoke me to that level. Right. So, no. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, because my friends and I joke like that all the time. No, we're not talking joke. We're talking actual. Bring out that friend and mean to do it. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, prior to 2006, were you ever were you ever so angry with someone that you wanted to hurt them? Yes. Okay. Um, what was that answer about? Someone's knocking at the door. No, that was my foot. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, 
Well, uh, what, what incident comes to mind? The uncle that raped me when I was nine years old. Okay, so you didn't tell me about that. No, but so I didn't ask, but yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, not something I'm proud of, but yeah. Not someone I'd really just sleep over or something bad happened to them. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I didn't realize that would be. No, no, and I'm not trying to get your your mm -hmm. personal past. No, I, I understand. It's, it, it's something I've come to terms with, and it's just <sighs> he lives here in Florida somewhere. And hopefully, I never run into him. All right. So, if I was to ask you before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. Okay. a few questions. Um, they're called technical questions. Mm -hmm. Is your first name Steven? Yes. Do you work at Vital Security? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Okay. So any questions or concerns about any of those? No. No? Okay. No. Um, for being in between isn't going to cause an issue with the thing, is it? I hope. I don't know why I'm really gassy right now. <laughs> Just try to control it and breathe and all. Like I said, these tests last about five minutes again. Yeah. We'll get you in there. Just got them out. <laughs> Some might wonder if it isn't counterproductive to go over the questions and give Duxbury time to figure out what he needs to lie about. However, these are supposed to be simple yes or no questions. And if a person doesn't remember or is unclear on details, that might throw them off enough to affect the test results. Whether he has the time or not, Duxbury will react to telling a lie, but they don't want him breaking the flow to ask questions. Do you work for Vital Security? Yes. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Hmm. 
Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Before this year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? No. Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Did you cause the death of Sasha? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. Questions about his temper probably won't have much bearing on this case. The video evidence of Duxbury following Sam Sudin, as well as the internet search for how to override the model of door lock on her apartment, indicated this was premeditated. Test is almost complete. Please remain completely still. I take the instrument out of operation. Oh. Well, 
kind of the route? It is 520. So, if the third thing goes well, well, I have two more of these to do. They're five minutes apiece. I'm just trying to figure out how much time I'm going to have to lay down between now and work. Do I drive back? Yeah, I'll get this way. I don't have to be to work till 11 tonight. So, I need my 930. I might be able to lay down for an hour. Or I might stick on the bus and say, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it tonight. Well, I was worried about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is more important, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I, my, the way my head goes, I just probably think of everything. I try to plan ahead for everything. It takes a little while, you know, I did your background, yep. you know, talk for a little bit. Mm -hmm. The test is actually doesn't take very long. Yeah, it's just everything else leading up to it. <laughs> yeah. I just got to get a better, you know, generalized idea about who you are, the mm -hmm. kind of person you are, and then yep. a little bit about the knowledge of the case, and mm -hmm. then boom. Mm to begin. Please remain completely still and answer each question with a simple yes or no. Is your first name Stephen? Yes. for vital security? Yes. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Do you now live in Port Orange? Yes. Sasha's death. No. Before this year, did you ever threaten anyone with physical harm? No.
Were you born in New Hampshire? Yes. Did you cause the death of Sasha? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Before last summer, have you ever lost control of your behavior because of your temper? No. All right, the test is almost complete. Please remain completely still while take the instrument out of operation. The last rounds of the questions are about to be asked, and while there aren't many different questions once you set aside the repetition, there should be enough there to either clear Duxbury or show points where he needs to be questioned further. So 
now we're getting to the relevant issues on the hand. Mm -hmm. All right. So same applies here. Okay. What jumps out? I mean, just jumps off the page at you. In particular, each each line is a question. Okay. All right. I know some bunch of them, they kind of, right at the beginning, they kind of loop up a little bit. Or a lot in some cases. At the beginning where it pointed out to me. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one. Mm -hmm. Right, but we're looking for the ones that just jump out at you. The, big, the biggest, the biggest uh, changes you see. I say. These two. Okay. And down here, that one, mm -hmm. and kind of I guess this one too. Okay, it's because they see the line and that goes up. Okay, so you're seeing that yourself, right? All right. So you said R three, R five, R eight, R nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jump out of it, out of it, catch it. And that one, the line kind of goes up over the thing. Yeah, huge, right? Mm -hmm. Jumps right out of it, actually. Mm -hmm. Is there another one that jumps real way out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one over there. Okay. And again, it goes up the line. Okay, all right. This one look big, bigger than this one, and bigger than that one. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. No, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, because it's not as big as the other two. And you said R8 is big, mm -hmm. and not so much there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got R8, mm -hmm. R5, R3. Mm -hmm. Good. This is what's pretty cool about my job. I can, I'll let you pick it up. Mm -hmm. This one again. R3. Now, compare this one, this one, and this one. Well, you got, you got not only got this, but you have this. Mm -hmm. The technician goes over the results with Duxbury, making him point out the various spikes. This has to be making Duxbury nervous. Anyone with a minimal understanding of polygraph tests know that spikes probably aren't good. Compounding his worry is that he doesn't know which questions these are, so he's pretty much left hanging until the technician tells him or someone comes in to do more questioning. So out of these three, which one jumps out at you? I don't know. It's just the way the line is up there, and I guess that yeah, one. Yeah, it's not going as far as this. It's, mm -hmm. it's like from here mm -hmm. all the way up here. So you got one, two, three, four, five bars. Okay. Here, because I'm asking the question, so here's the line. So you got one, two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, this one, which was bigger? Which one has more lines? This one has more lines. Okay, so, so we got R3, R5, mm -hmm. and this one and this one. Which one? And you can look at that. Okay. And one and a little bit, one a little bit, in between this and this. And this is a hot mess because that's when I asked you that multiple times. <laughs> yeah. But see how your 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 whole heart rate went up like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's kind of similar to to this and that. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're you're picking out so we're we're both in agreement. Now you're helping me grade this, okay? Mm -hmm. So you got you're telling the artery and, and this has been consistent on every chart, right? So we got R3, R5, R8, and R9 is questionable. I guess I mean, I don't really take attention to the R parts. But, well, these are the numbers that you've been picking on all the charts. Okay. So now, read me the question, read the question to R3. Did you enter the department that night? 
read our sign. Do you know who cussed us at that? R7. I'm sorry, R8. Did you cause the death of Sasha? And R9. Did you remove any items in Sasha's apartment? Okay. Which happened? So basically what you you told me, mm -hmm. okay, I let you look at the charts. Mm -hmm. I let you tell me what jumped out of the screen off the charts at you. Yeah. Correct? Yep. Yeah. So we were of the same opinion that the only thing that really seems to be bothering you on this test is these relevant questions that pertain to the situation that we're here dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, how is scored? All right, I'm just telling you all the technical stuff. Okay. Okay. So you got, we score the, the relevant questions. Okay, and that's how we score. We compare the relevance to these other questions. Okay. Because, and this is how it works. I don't know if you did any research on it. Anyway. Uh, okay. All right. That should have been one of your questions. <laughs> That's okay. I thought about throwing that in there because you had advanced warning, but to me it's not a big deal. I would, uh, you know, I, I see some issues with the breathing. I mean, when I'm able to count and it's constantly the same count, mm -hmm. it, it shows me that, you know, it's kind of questionable whether you, you were thinking about your breathing, but that's neither here nor there. Because mm -hmm. um, I only need two of the three tracing or four. Mm -hmm. To get a good score, yep. score the charts. Okay, so okay. Here, here's my score sheet. Mm -hmm. Relevant three, five, eight, and nine. Okay. okay, the P is for the breathing. These are the two. They're called pneumograph tubes. Okay, so it starts with a P. Mm -hmm. So you have the top one, bottom one. We look at the R three compared to R six mm -hmm. and the four. You know, we compare them and we look for any differences. Mm -hmm. Here, for the most part on all charts, I didn't really see anything different on any of the breathing. So your breathing didn't change at all during the charts. Okay. E is for the electrodermal activity, which is this middle line here. Okay. Yep. So what I do is I compare this. So I count, see these little squares or yep. rectangles? I count how far it goes up mm -hmm. compared to the control questions. Okay. And I compare those and it either gets a plus or a minus. Mm -hmm. In this case, when when, when a person has more issues with the with the relevant question than they do the control question, mm -hmm. then, you know, because we all know, and we've all had these issues where, you know, there, there's been a time in your life where, where we, we've had um, physical contacts with our physical mm -hmm. issues with people, mm -hmm. okay? And we have, we've been in fights. We, we've done all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of, we know that, but... When we ask the question, you know, that's supposed to bother you more because you know you're kind of lying about that because you're remembering a, a, an incident mm -hmm. compared to you shouldn't have any problem with the, the issue at hand mm -hmm. if there was nothing involved there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So technically, the control questions should look like this mm -hmm. and the relevance okay. should look like the controls. Okay. So, so what you're saying is this is not good? This is not good. Okay. All I need is a minus three in any one of these spots. Mm -hmm. You got a minus three in all of them except for a minus four and a zero and one. Hmm. For this to be a negative test. Okay. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means you have some memory and some issues with these relevant questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, the issue is, my thing is, is, after talking to you, I, I don't think you're a bad guy. You're a really smart guy. You're you're you seem to be a good guy. You've had some things happen in your life that's that's screwed up. Yep. And you know, and you had to deal with a lot more than most people had to do. And and I get that. Um, but there comes a time where sometimes things happen and people freak out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they make a mistake and then they panic. Mm -hmm. And you know, it it comes to what would look better, you know, because right now there's, you know, the detectives, they have, you know, stuff they're looking at and they're getting reports back with, you know, all the forensic stuff they're doing. And I know you've been cooperating and that's, that's a huge, huge factor for you, okay? That is huge. But the thing is, when it comes to this, okay, um, you know, obviously 
my report's going to say that you didn't do too good on this test. Yeah. All right. And I have to explain that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, I'm here to listen to you. If you know, if you want to talk and, and explain to me why you might have some issues on these questions. Okay. Because if, if something happened, it was an accident, and you panicked because maybe uh, you, uh, from what I understand. She was being very flirtatious to other people, and that's what got her there to the to the apartment. Because those two girls grabbed her before she got in the car with some guys. And I don't know about that. No, I know you don't know. That happened before she got to the uptown. Okay. Okay. That these girls didn't even know her. And that's why they told you. Yeah, yeah. We don't even know her. But what happened is they they snatched her up and they got her away from those guys because she was being very very flirtatious. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, based on this, there's something going on here, okay? And so maybe she somehow talked you into coming in. Um, well, the chart's saying that you did, this is huge. Mm -hmm. Given the explanation of the readings, if anyone can be said to have failed a test with flying colors, that person would be Duxbury. These aren't anywhere close to the readings of an innocent man, and although the technician is giving him room to claim it was an accident that got out of hand, it's unlikely that Duxbury will be able to get away with even that much. And this is, did you enter her apartment? I didn't. All right, well, I mean, the only thing, I'm honest, the, the situation is bothering me. I mean, with, about the whole thing about her. I mean, I'll, I'll be straight up. And this whole situation has been bothering me. And just thinking about what may have happened, just, and, and I understand that, but that's why I was very clear about clearing that up know, before we took the I know, test. I know, all right, because that was very important. Yep. Because that's why I kind of did the first test first well, to, get, to get that out of the way, explain to you, and clear those issues up. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's very important. And because I wanted you to, to take the best test possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was my goal. Yep. And I think I succeeded in that. Yeah, I mean, and, I was trying not to think of anything, just answer and, the questions. But. And you yourself was able to pick out mm -hmm. every spot that looked like a reaction. Yeah. I didn't even have to point them out to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm, good at, I'm good at analyzing patterns. Okay. Well, without even being a polygraph examiner, you were able to show me each question you had issue with. Mm -hmm. And all, every single one of them on every single chart was a relevant question. So that means there's something there. There's something that you're not telling the complete truth about. Something's bothering you about this situation, and you're not being 100% honest with me about it. That's what I can tell you, and that's all I can tell the detectives, that there is something there that you're not being 100% honest about. Now, if she invited you in to have a few drinks or something like that, or whatever it was, you need to be honest about it because this is saying you know something, and that something happened. This is what this is telling me. And you yourself agreed that these were the yeah, situations. Yeah, yeah, that point, yeah that, something that points out. But I mean, and like I said, sometimes things happen. If she was over flirtatious and something happened and you panicked, we can understand that. But if you can feel that and, you know, all the evidence comes in and you had your opportunity today to talk about it, it's not going to look good because if it was an accident, that's one thing that we can explain away. But if you don't talk about it, and it comes back, it makes it look like you're, what, a monster, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't think you're that kind of person, okay? The same stuff happened to you when you were little. You told me about that. Yeah. And recently with the whole getting stabbed thing. Right. So you told me about that, okay? So you understand what it's like. And so for that being said, you got to understand that we need to explain this stuff away. Mm -hmm. It's very important for you. Okay? You were the last person to see her. Okay? And based on your own opinions on this chart that you pointed out to me, yeah. okay, obviously something was there's wrong. something's bothering you. We need to we need to get this behind you is what it is because like I said, you know, th this can go either way. You can either look like a horrible monster mm -hmm. or some an accident happened and you panicked, and we can explain that kind of stuff. But if you don't talk about it, it's not going to look good. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know what to talk about. I mean, nothing happened. I mean, I never went into her apartment. So, I mean, I don't know why I did reacted the way it did. Because your autonomic system that you can't control mm -hmm. kicked in. You have no control over that. That's why this works so well. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you another thing. One more thing. I'll show you. You're in the DNA evidence, right? Yep. Okay, so you know when it comes in, it says, you know, one in whatever billion, million people. Okay. Now, what I do is, I won't trust computers. Yep. I hands for myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to let this do it. Mm -hmm. There. What's that say? Significant reactions. Uh, probably this is what was produced by a triple person. 0.003% chance that the result was produced by a triple person. Damn. 0.003% chance mm -hmm. that you were truthful on this test today. That percentage is horrible, and Duxbury has to realize that he's not going to be able to come up with a story that is going to get him out of this. The walls are closing in, and it's only a matter of time until he either breaks or they put together enough forensic evidence to guarantee a conviction. And that, what it does is it scores all three charts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it does all its little algorithm stuff. You're into that kind of stuff. So, yeah. see all these minus threes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's basically almost almost identical to my scoring. Mm -hmm. So, not only did I have another polygraph examiner mm -hmm. look at this, because what I did was I scored it, mm -hmm. and he scored it, and then we compared the scores, mm -hmm. and they were identical. And now you have this also. Mm -hmm. So how do we get past that? That's the issue. I don't know. I, I, I can only help you so much. Okay. I know, I understand. I mean, you've been very helpful explaining these things to me as it is. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's, yep. you know, th th these are, this is the report that detectives are going to get. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll explain to the kid. You come in. Hey, Dr. David, how are you doing? Pretty good. Thanks. I was just showing you, this is the computer scoring the charts. Yeah. There is a 3% chance that the results were produced by a truthful person. So that's basically a 99.7% chance that he's being deceitful. Okay. So, okay. Now, I'll let you guys talk. Are you okay, Steve? Well, uh, not anymore. I don't know what this thing is going on. See, I, I've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. I really don't think you're, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But sometimes good people do bad things. It does not make you a bad person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just overreact. Or sometimes you could be enticed into doing something. One thing we're asking from you, Steve, is just, just the truth. It's just the truth. Okay? Yeah. Uh, that's difficult for a lot of people. But you've been in the military. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of life experience. Mm -hmm. And I understand some bad things have happened, have happened to you in life. Yeah. And lying is never going to make it better. Because mm -hmm. I can see it in your eyes, Steve. I can see it in your eyes. Something has been, it's been laying heavy on your heart ever since you found out. It's been laying heavy on your heart. Have you thought about anything else? Just that something bad has happened on my watch. Something bad has happened. And we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it, see. There's certain things, obviously, that we already know. We know you were actually, you guys were on, how many floors were you guys on? First floor, 
third floor. Is that it? That's what I can remember. You don't remember being on the fourth floor? Oh, no, 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 no. No? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Or something you don't want to remember? I don't remember being on the fourth floor. Listen to you. I, I will tell you this. I'm not saying Sasha was a, was a bad person. But she was very flirtatious. Very. We were tracking her from downtown where she's trying to pick up guys. Mm -hmm. So, you she know. She wasn't flirting with me. I mean, other than, you know, leaning against me in the hallway because she could barely stand. But she wasn't flirting with me. She never flirted with you? No. She never asked you to come inside the apartment? If she had asked me to come inside the apartment, I would have told her no. But this is the problem. According to what I'm looking at. I don't know. But I've been asked by other residents in the past, too, to come into their apartments. And I've also told them no. I had one offer me sexual favors, and I declined. The only person who knows that that other than me is my supervisor. Because we didn't want to embarrass the resident because he was drunk at the time. Or possibly just lonely and maybe tipsy, I don't know. I take my job seriously, and when my job says I'm not allowed to go into someone's apartment, I don't go into someone's apartment. The only time I would ever go into someone's apartment is with a detective like yourself, or a police officer, or an EMT, or something, someone that I have to go in with because, you know, doing something within my duties. Whereas, so how do we explain this? I don't know. I am bothered by the situation, I will tell you that, because Something has happened to someone in the building that I'm responsible for that I'm supposed to keep everyone safe. Yes, I've been bothered by this since the moment I saw and heard about the situation. It's been bothering me. I've been having a hard time sleeping because of this. I've been terrified of what's going to happen when I go to work tonight because I know I'm going to be having residents asking me questions. I might even have newspaper people trying to corner me. Now, this whole thing is bothering me. And I knew this was going to end up happening because this is not the first time I've had police officers assume I did the worst thing. Okay. When was the other time? A juvenile record. Oh, okay. Yeah. A juvenile thing that I pled guilty despite the fact that I was innocent because I didn't want to destroy a friend of mine's family. A couple of things. Yes. You know, um, just as the detective said, mm -hmm. Good, bad things happen to good people sometimes, right? Yeah, I know that for a fact. Well, well, you know, I can relate to what you're going through. You know what? I sat in that chair for the rest of the year, looked up to that machine because I was accused of something very serious. Okay? And it's no joke. And it scared the shit out of me because when you're accused of something, it's, it scares you. Yeah. The detectives that have come in have tried to present themselves as being sympathetic in an attempt to get Duxbury to admit to something that he could possibly blame on Sam Sudin. If he just admits going into the apartment, that alone would be a large piece of evidence against him. And it was on my mind. And I was nervous. My heart was beating real fast. But you know what? I passed. So I'm a big, huge believer in this machine. All right, so <clears throat> we have to explain away. You can say that it's been going through your mind. You can say all those things. I understand that. All right? Because I couldn't sleep either because I was accused of something very serious. And I still passed. Because I know I didn't do what I was accused of. Okay. Second thing is this. <clears throat> I know you take your job seriously. I, I believe you. I can see the way you carry yourself, the way you are there, you know, a little bit that we saw you do take your job seriously. We looked look at your reports. You're very serious. Methodical, what you think? Yeah. Meticulous. Yes. Don't miss anything. Try not to. For the most part, you would say you don't, right? Yeah. You document things. Don't miss anything. Again, like I said, try not to. But I don't see them. Right. But for the most part, when you see a violation or something happens, you, you notate on your records, correct? Yes. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> so, you know, with that being said, we have an issue. Huh? Okay. What garbage did you take out that day? Some trash at uh, Morial, that's what I turned in my report. Where did you find it? Uh, I think it was on the second floor. On the second floor? Mm -hmm. yeah. What was on our apartment? I, uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. That's happened to you before? Well, I'm not remembering. Or no, I'm finding trash. Yeah, usually I find it when, during my shift. And what do you document. do with it? Usually I just document it. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you took trash out? Mm -hmm. Usually Tom, because when it's on my shift, I just deal with it. Where was your car parked? On um, the second floor. Okay. And you said you were on your way out? Yes. But you came back in? Yeah, because I had to get my stuff, and then I went back out and left. So you weren't really on your way out? I was on my way to get my stuff. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, that's okay. I know what you're saying. So, <coughs> we have an issue. Mm -hmm. You didn't report that, did you? No, it was already after my shift was over. But it's still a violation, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody violated it. Yeah. And you never mentioned it? No, it was off my shift. I understand that. I'm not saying it wasn't, but still, you say you, you document things, you don't miss things, right? Yeah, once on my shift. Right. So, do you understand how that's starting to look? Yeah, it doesn't look good. Right. Okay. So, you take that with, we know you're on the fourth floor with her, right? Where did you first hear it when she went inside? She was, we went to me when I first saw Well, I mean, your statement to us before was you, you went inside to go look for her, right? Yeah. Okay, where was the first place that you saw her when you found her? So maybe the second or third floor. Maybe the floor. Honestly, Because your first statement, your written statement says you found her by her, by her apartment. Mm -hmm. That's your statement says. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Uh, so why does your statement you're, say you're that? You're confusing me. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to understand. Mm -hmm. Understand. No, no, no. Understand. I'm I think it's awesome. I know you're I'm fine. nervous as hell right now because now you guys are basically accusing me of doing something. No, sir. We're just trying to understand why we're getting the reaction we're getting, okay? Mm -hmm. That's it. Because we have to explain that. Mm -hmm. And and we have an obligation to the family mm -hmm. and to, to our superiors mm -hmm. to be able to explain that. Because we say, well, we couldn't explain it. <laughs> you understand. Way. you got to do your job. Yeah, it's just okay. like when the whole bad things happen to people, people panic, stuff. I know, what, I know what that, how that sounds and I know what that leads to. What does that lead to? It leads to, next thing I know, I'm a suspect. You guys think I did something bad. We're just trying to understand why. I'm bothered by these questions. Yeah. And we we'll understand, you know, again, we're looking at um, your statement, your first written statement. Yeah. And I've seen you write reports. You write very detailed reports. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah in this report. On the spot, having to pick everything right from out of my head. I'm not okay. very good on the spot. It's mostly on the spot when they talk to you and you wrote a statement. It's just you were confused. Well, you didn't say. well, everything's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. I'm trying to remember everything that I can about the situation. Okay. But basically, to me, that's somewhat on the spot. Okay. Speaking. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Something happened that night. Something happened that night that, that we can't. We can't deny. We cannot deny that. I'm looking at. An issue? Yep. Okay. And where do you have that here? That would be, um, that's the uh, stairwell that uh, stairwell C that exits us on to Pasadena. The detectives already know quite a bit about Duxbury, which indicates that they already had their eye on him. They've gone through his reports. They've noticed the odd behavior concerning the trash and they have tracked his movements on the security cameras. At this point, there's really no path for him to explain this away. Okay. Why are you not in the stairway? Because I was walking around with her. Okay. So you were walking around with her? Yeah. Okay. So you didn't tell us that? Yeah, honestly, I did. I slipped my mind. We asked you. She said she came, she did not have to fall, so she could not get in. Yeah. Or, um, she got her allow her to go in. And you tell us, then you start doing your rounds, mm -hmm. and you encounter her on the third floor. Mm -hmm. 
that's on the first floor. This building, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you, you see the problem that we yeah. have? No, I, yeah, I can understand what the issue is here. Okay. You're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to tell the truth. I am telling you the truth. This will bother you. This will eat at you. It will eat at you the rest of your life. That I can guarantee. Well, we can deal with the truth. What will get me the rest of my life? That you're not being truthful. I'm being truthful with you. Thank you. You can say that, but there are just so many discrepancies in your statement. Things that even day one didn't, didn't make a, a lot of sense to us. Mm. Don't you think you should, you should have allowed her to? Right. Okay. Shouldn't you have made sure that she was inside of her apartment? Yeah, I shouldn't okay. have. We see you guys coming from the parking garage, which you did tell the truth about, because yeah. you guys didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. And something happened, and you guys come right back in. I think you said that she said she was going to call And you guys go right to her door and she's punching in that code. Is that accurate? Because that's an audio. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm partially aware you have audio, a yeah. long video. Actually, I didn't know that. Were you? Okay. No, I actually oh, you did? No, I didn't know that the uh, things were <clears throat> actually did audio until the property manager had actually showed um, myself and my supervisor. When was that? Uh, that was actually the night that uh, you guys were all there. The okay. night I my uh, verbal statement. Right. So, so that's audio. Mm -hmm. So I can hear the things that you guys are saying. Yeah. And we we know she's putting in her code. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? It still wasn't working. You, what did you do? I went and walked around. I told you. And just left her there. Mm -hmm. Not knowing if she really resided there? No. And like I said, I, when I came back, if she had still been there, I would have dealt with the situation, either told her she had to leave, or I would have called you guys and had you guys remove her until something could be done about it. I want to give you the opportunity to go walk around. We're trying to understand this. Okay, so We're trying to understand I was giving her the benefit of the doubt, and because, honestly... But that's not your job, is it? No, it's not. And so, you know, it's not my job, and I was I was reprimanded for doing that already by my supervisor, actually by my boss. And, yeah, what I should have done is was stay with her, make sure she got into her apartment, and then left. But I have to babysit drunk kids in that complex all the time. I have other things I need to check to make sure that people are not breaking into apartments. I've had people try to get into the property before it did not belong. They were trying to sneak in. So around... Yes, yes, but we can agree that you can't be every place at that time, can you? Exactly. Right? You can yes. only be in one place at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's agree that if you have people sneak into a door downstairs, you would have to deal with that, correct? Right? Correct. Right. And if that, while that's going on, something else happens up on the third floor for the parking deck, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, Let's make it different for it. Let's say four, four, and fifth floor. Uh -huh. Okay. Something happens where somebody breaks the door, does something, right? But you're downstairs and you're dealing with a legitimate issue. Uh -huh. Are you going to get in trouble for that? No. No. We can agree on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Then why did would I you? Would you but I should say, would you call this a pressing issue? I mean, yeah. well, the, reason I, why, the reason why I did what I did was because I've had cases before where I've had drunken people get locked out of their apartments. Usually, yeah, I'll leave them there, let them try to figure out what they're trying to do. I'll go do a walk around. Hopefully, by the time I get back, they figure out the situation. Yeah. It has happened in the past. Usually, you find those people right at their apartment. Yeah. Okay. Why did you go specifically after she walked in the door? Did you go floor by floor by floor and find her? Because I wanted to make sure she was okay. She was obviously drunk and intoxicated, and I had to verify whether or not she was actually. So then the alive. question comes back to why would you leave her if she's so drunk and so intoxicated? Because Where she I left her at the door, and I pretty much figured she wasn't going to move from that spot. She was going to stay there and keep plugging away at that stupid key. But do you there. understand that? Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. And yeah, I agree. That was a stupid thing for me to do, was to leave her alone. It's so on video where you're chasing her at one point. That's because she thought she'd be funny and start running off. 
Well, that's my question. If it's not that big of a deal, I've had this happen before. Again, this is not something that's completely out of the norm for me to deal with drunken people doing stupid shit. Right, but I, I still come back to, I, what I'm trying to understand, and I keep coming back to it is, you went four by four by four looking for her, she's running, you're, you're going to try to find her, mm -hmm. and, and, and basically this is a problem. It's taking up your time. Yeah. And I understand you're saying, was, well, you know, I don't, I, don't like to, I, I don't want to have to call you guys for just to, to, to take someone around. No, no, and I understand that, but after three or four or five times she puts the code in, I you know, know, you know, she could have been stalking her ex-boyfriend for all you know. Yeah, I know. And, and you, did, yeah, you, didn't, you didn't call? Yeah. Did you have a cell phone with you? Yeah, I had my cell phone. And you didn't call? Yeah. Did she ask to use the phone? Did you offer to call your friends for her? No. So how was she? never asked me to use my phone. Did you, did you offer to say, hey, can we call your friends for you? No, I never offered. Duxbury grows more upset with each passing question. The pressure is mounting, and he feels trapped. They keep pointing out oddities and inconsistencies in the way he handled the situation with Sam Sudin, and he has no response that will satisfy them. So that that becomes an issue, and then and then you know you walk back by right, and she's not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have knocked on the door to check to make sure she was okay. Why didn't you? Because I'm not. Yeah. I don't make it in a habit to knock on someone's door unless there's a problem. Plus, oh, what makes it a problem? Yes or no. If she got into the apartment, then at that point, but, big, not, but I'm not responsible for them once they've reached their apartment. So it's their private condos owned by individuals, not by the building. But we can agree that you didn't know that was her apartment. Yes, I can agree. Yeah, we can agree that. So it could have been a problem that she was inside. Yeah, it could have been. But, but you did not. Yeah, I should have. Been. See, but, you know, I have an issue with something else too. I'm gonna tell you. I, you know, I look at human behavior and human nature. Okay. Okay. And I have an issue with something. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been doing this for a long time, and everybody that we've spoken to about this case has asked us several questions. What happened? How? When? You've never asked any of it. I don't understand. I don't want to know. Why not? Because I don't want to find out that something happened on my shift that I could have prevented had I been around, and then that's going to be a way for the rest of my life. What else could it be? What do you think? You, 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 you're kind of on our side. I mean, what would that indicate to you, possibly? Someone who doesn't care. Someone who knows. What do you think I know? I just, I'm just saying. We have to be, you know. Yeah, no, I understand that she goes to job. Well, it's just something we look at. Mm -hmm. So now you look at, you've got these garbage bags that you didn't report to anybody. You're taking them out to the second floor. Dumpster. Um, where you're, well, the dumpster's there, but your car's there, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's things missing. Right? What's that? We looked at certain things. Things match up. And... You know, we're, we're, there's holes in, in, in your statements. Mm -hmm. Every time we talk to you, there's more and more and more that comes out. And that just gives us a lot of pause. Mm -hmm. okay. So, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, when I really talk with general, you know, sometimes, you know, there's, there's things that go out of our control. And, and it's something that, it happens like that. But the thing is, people don't have intense, you know, like a car accident. You look down for one second at your cell phone, and the next thing you know, you're in a fatal accident. And the person on the other side is, 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 is gone. That's an accident. Sometimes, you know, you still have to answer for that. You still have to deal with it. But it's a lot better than if you drank six beers and got in the car and drove. I mean, that's a purposeful act. Would you agree? Uh -huh. Or at least a really stupid decision. Well, but, well yeah. you know, I'm it's, saying, saying it's yeah. purposeful. Somebody said, I'm going to do something I know I'm going to do, and they go in and, you know, I'm going to drink these beers, I'm going to drive and fuck everybody else, and that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they kill somebody. That's, that's a hell of a lot different than, than somebody, oh, I 
looked down for three seconds on my cell phone. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm so, so sorry. How do you think, how do you think a jury's going to look at a person like that versus a person who purposely drank and drove? And drove? How do you think a jury's going to look at that? How do you think society's going to handle somebody that says, you know, I, 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 I swear to God, it was an accident. I didn't mean it. Versus somebody who, who purposely does something to, to, to hurt somebody or cause a problem with society. How do you think they're going to look at, look at, we've got A over here and B over here. How do you think society's going to look at those people? They're going to look better on A than B. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes things happen. And you know what? Everything that we're looking at, there's problems with every little bit of what we're looking at. Okay? I don't think you're a monster. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I think you're an honorable man. The temptation sometimes. And holy shit. She was a pretty girl. Wasn't she? My wife's mother. Sorry. Well, that's okay. You know what? Hey, look at some of these superstars. Yeah. They got the hottest wives going. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? Yeah. They'll go find some, some $100 whore and they'll, they'll screw around with them because it's different. Yeah. We're guys. There's no temptation. There's temptation everywhere. Yeah. You can't tell me that, you know, your wife could be the hottest in the world. I'm not saying she's not. Mm -hmm. But, no, I've, I've looked. No, she's sure. looked. She's looked. Sure, man. And you said the one that offered the sexual, the, the sexual favors was a dude. Yeah. Okay, so that's a little different. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about a girl, a pretty girl. Nine times out of ten, you're going to say no because it's your job. Mm -hmm. It's it's who you are. Every man stumbles and every man falls sometimes, and it causes us to do things. Now, if that's the case, and it happens. It's not going to go away. Understand that. It's not. But remember, society is going to look at you one way or another. Did you want her? Did you want Did you want her? her? Want, she's oh, one of the residents that I'm responsible for. No, well, listen to my question. No, listen. Did you want her? her? Because there's predators out there that are going to go and do things on purpose. And then there's people that are going to fall into a temptation situation. And shit's going to happen. And the next thing you know, they're pressing hard, trying to make Duxbury think he'll look better if he claims it was an accident. He won't actually be viewed that way, but if they can get him to believe it long enough to get a confession, that's all that matters. But again, that's just like the person who texted versus the person who drank six beers. This is the time. This is your time. Okay? If this gun is still out there, I know, I know things were done, but that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. That's a big gamble you're taking. You want to sit and wait, and if it comes back, we're going to say, they say, yep, here it is. We got the physical evidence now. And he didn't tell us anything, because that makes it look like you're that guy. This guy. Purposeful. I'm going to take what I want, I'm going to do what I want. Versus this guy. Okay? I'm not trying to get you to say anything that didn't happen. I'm just telling you the way it works. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't want to hurt her. I didn't hurt her. Can we at least agree that you did go inside? Now you may not have heard her. I did not come inside of her apartment. There's a lot of physical evidence. Even after she invited you in? She didn't invite me into her apartment. You, you know there's audio. There's audio. Mm -hmm. We can hear you too. Mm -hmm. She didn't invite me into her apartment. And if we're going to continue on this line of discussion, I think we're done here for now. But I'm going to go home. I'm going to take a nap, and I'm going to go to work. If you guys want to talk to me again some other time, we'll have a lawyer involved. Because at this point, I don't feel comfortable talking with you, detectives, because it's making it, because it sound, sounds to me like you're trying to make me say something. Like I did something and I did oh, not. We don't want, we want the truth is all we want. Well, you have the truth. I'm sorry that some of my stuff has been kind of spotty. I'm sorry I may have forgotten some key details or even minor details that look really bad when they're not told. But I have told you everything. I've been more than cooperative. I mean, I even, told, I I even told you yesterday that I wasn't familiar and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not kind of nervous about these things. I still came in today. You did. Now, that, now I'm looking at this. Now I'm seeing this as a mistake to come in for this because 
Now it just makes it look like I did something because obviously I'm bothered by the situation. There was a dead person that I saw in the building I'm responsible for the security of. Well, one thing I came to, Stephen, is change the results. I know, no. I, I, you do understand that. No, I understand that. No, I understand, understand that. you've already said that you're, you're done for the day. Yeah, I, I do understand that. And I, and I respect that. But you have to know, this isn't, this isn't going away. Yeah, I know. I understand. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I wish it was the other way around. Yeah, me too, yeah, because, because obviously really this probably will be good for me. The, the result will produce about a fruitful version. Mm -hmm. I wish it was 99.99% probability that this result was produced by a truthful person, but, but it is. If I'm not qualified to administer that test. The person who did is is overly qualified, and we just, it, it is what it is. With all that being said, uh, we will make sure to get you back out to your vehicle. Thank you, sir. Okay? Yeah. All right. Did you have a pain? Did you have anything you gave me? Just my wallet and my keys. And what pen is that process? And your what? You need to sign back. Yep. Okay. Duxbury sees the setup for what it is and declines to answer any more questions until he can have a lawyer present. The detectives let him go, but warn that this isn't going away. Duxbury does his best to stay calm, but the tension in his voice shows that there is turmoil under the surface. It turns out that Duxbury had quite a lot to worry about. Sam Sudin's body had been covered in bleach in an attempt to destroy DNA evidence, but it was unsuccessful. Enough was found to make a match with Duxbury. In addition, cameras caught him stalking her through the building, and his phone's browsing history contained a search on how to override the lock on her apartment door. Duxbury was also seen leaving the building with trash cans, most likely containing more evidence. In 2017, Stephen Duxbury was convicted of first-degree murder, along with attempted sexual battery involving physical force and burglary with assault. Duxbury is currently incarcerated at the Graceville Correctional Facility in Jackson County, Florida.